Hello. Hello. Thanks for joining me tonight. This is Carol from the Social Canvas, or today, I should say. Whenever you join me, that's fine. Uh, uh, tonight, I will be painting Phyllis the Philly, my fun, colourful, cheeky horse. Um, and uh, I hope you enjoy it. I'm working on a slightly bigger canvas of paper, actually, than, than the one I have here, but it's all depends on what um, you are working on. This is a uh, 16 by 12 size. This is a, actually done on a 12 by 10 inch, so um, anything goes. Just try and keep it in proportion to your paper or your canvas. Um, I'm going to run through some items that you're going to need tonight. Um, one of them is obviously the canvas. Paint brushes. Whatever paint brushes you've got will work, but I'm going to work with an angled brush, which is a number eight. I'm going to work with a small angle brush, which is a number four. Uh, a small round detail brush, which I think is a number ooh, four as well. Um, and I may switch to another one. So tonight, um, or today I should say, I'm going to do a couple of different things than what's on here because I want to make it a bit more special. I'm going to um, make Phyllis's mane into rainbow colours. If you would like to do that, please do that at your wish. If you do not wish to do that, I want you to do your own thing. But I'm going to show you how I do that. I'm going to interconnect the brown with some rainbow colours. So, you know, please if you want to, and ask questions if you want to, or comment, I should say, uh, as you wish. So, first of all, um, it, I don't usually pencil anything out when I'm painting. I go straight into it. But just for the detail of the outside, if you have a pencil, I would grab one quickly. If you need to stop and rewind then to grab one, then do so. But I'm just going to mark out the shape of Phyllis's uh, lovely, beautiful face, uh, and then um, then it will be easier to paint. So if you do have a pencil, go grab one, and um, we'll begin. In the meantime, I just want to mention that you need some water if you're using acrylic paint or watercolours. If you're using markers or pencil, coloured pencils, then you don't obviously need that. Uh, so, it, you know, you can do this in, in whatever medium you want. I'm using acrylics and I tend to use between student and um, artist grade acrylics so anything goes at this point. So today I'm going to mark out just the basic face shape first of all and then we're going to get down to the rest so let's begin. Okay I have kind of started a little bit I'm going to start again though so I'm going to start at the ear on this right hand side ear and I'm just going to bring the ear out at an angle like this and in a little bit like that. So if you can see that, I'll bring it closer. I'm going to give a high line line at the back and then I'm going to bring the other ear in from the other side and I'm going to bring it out like that and in like this. You can, you know, the shapes of your ears is, is entirely up to you. I'm just going to leave it like that. And then, so the face itself, it's coming down at an angle like this. So I want you to bear that in mind when you're doing it. So I'm just going to draw this line down here. And then when I get to a certain length, see the nose comes out a bit here. I'm just going to angle that out like this, like somebody's got a bump, for instance. And then I'm going to keep going at an angle down, round like this. And then as I get to the mouth, see the mouth is coming up a bit, like a slight rounded bit like that. So I'm going to go like that and round it out like so. I'm going to come up at an angle like this. Slight bump again just there, but only a small bump. And then I'm going to come out at an angle like this. And then you can join up where the ear is and come all the way down to that one. So just to show you closely like this. And you can stop your video at any point to just check that out. But you know what? When you're painting, you can make any amendments. So if, if you find like, oh, no, that's not the right shape, that's where you can just paint over any lines that you've made. 
So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make just the body, basic body shape. With the body shape, it's very simple. It's just coming out like that. That's the shoulder of Phyllis and coming down like so. And then on the neck here, I'm going to come down. Necks are quite long, as you know. I'm going to slide an angle there and then like so. So just round it out as you come to the bottom part like this. So that's kind of really the hardest part of all this. So if you're struggling in any way, as I said, don't worry too much because you can fix it with the paint. So then I'm going to just round out Phyllis's mouth, as in tongue, by just hanging it out like that. And as she comes to the bottom here, it's got a little bit, again, a bit like this bit here. It's got kind of a, an indent. And then you can start slightly narrower at the top, like so, and come out wider at the bottom. Okay? And then the same thing with the, the bottom bit here. I will just round it out like this. And then I'm going to put another line coming in like that. Okay? Again, just rounding it out like this, and then a small line coming in at the side. Like so. So that's that's what I'm going to um, uh, draw, and the rest is going to be pretty much painted in. So don't worry too much about the rest. Um, so first of all, um, I do have rainbow colours: red, yellow, orange together, of course, green, blue, indigo will be there, and then lilac. So I have all those out on my palette. I also have brown for uh, Phyllis's um, coat. I do have a light brown here. If you do want to do a light brown coat, you can. I have some black for some outline, and I have some pink for some tongue. But, you know, to be honest, you can use red and white for the tongue anyway, so it's no big deal. I'm going to um, do Phyllis's um, coat first of all. Actually, before I do Phyllis's coat, I am going to do one other thing, because I think it will help everybody to just maybe get this no shape in. Uh, so I'm going to start in between the ears, but slightly over this way, because I'm coming again. You're following the angle of your face. So leave a sort of a good space here. Come in at an angle and then join up where you've left that bump. I want you to join that up like so. I've actually come in a little bit. It's more or less straight down to it. So ignore my line there. Don't worry about that. If you've got a, a rubber, then it's easy, obviously, to just fix any of those little mistakes. <laughs> okay, so that's a guidance for us. And then I'm coming from the top of the ear there. I'm going to bring that narrow up to the top, and then I'm going to come out right the way round sort of following really where that bump is going out, sort of bumped out slightly on that side. And then I'm going to come in and join it up to there. So if you can see, I've left that line there, but then I've come in at the sides where my bump was like that. And then the other thing I am going to pencil in, because I think it will help everybody, is just the round eyes. So just really a round circle, like so. And this one... If you can keep them obviously the same um, on the same level, that would be good. You can make these as big or as small as you want. I'm going to start this size, and then if I want to get bigger, of course, it will be easier when I'm painting. And then finally, even though I said, okay, we're going to start painting, here I go again. With this, it's like a loop, like a teardrop sort of thing coming in at the side. So if you can see where I've come in, and looped it in like that. As I said, if you want to stop it while I show you it, then that's fine. And then follow your line here again. I'm going to try and bring that slightly down because Phyllis's head is slightly at an angle here. So you see, that's how I've just followed that. So that's how I'm going to leave that. And now we're going to start painting the fun bit. So I'm going to do Phyllis's coat first, and Phyllis's coat on my painting is brown. So if you have a brown already, wet your brush. 
not too wet. I have paper towels, so please take some if you need some to dab it. And I'm going to grab some brown. If you don't have brown, red, blue, and small bit of yellow, you can make brown. So do practice it if you want to. So this is the easy bit. I'm just going to fill in Phyllis's coat with brown. So that's all of the neck, body, and I'll show you the top. So hopefully you'll find this easier than just painting it out. But if you want to just paint it out, you can just paint it out. Just thought this time I would just make it a little bit easier for people to, uh, to get the lines right at least. So Phyllis's coat on this one, I think I did add a little bit of black to her coat on that one, but I'm not going to on this one. I'm going to leave it just brown. But if you want to add different tones, you can. If you want to add, you know, a, a light colour coat, you can do that too. So just be mindful of not going over your lines where you've drawn them for the tongue and the mouth. And don't forget to keep adding some water to your paint so that your paint flows. The one thing I will say is working on a canvas is easier than it is on this canvas paper. I chose to do this because I've already got one done on canvas. But um, canvas paper is great, but you still have to frame them, whereas canvas you can put straight on the wall. But also with canvas paper, unless you get a high GSM, which is just the um, tooth um, um, thickness, I should say. Um, like if you have a, a higher number of GSM, usually over 260, means it's a finer tooth, which means it's easier to sort of for your paint to glide on it, whether it's acrylic or oil. Um, it's just easier. But so let me go around the tongue. It's a beautiful day outside. Of course, I know it depends on when you're watching this. I know some people are not watching it live tonight, but don't blame you. It's gorgeous out there. Although we do need some rain. All right, so that's Phyllis's body almost done. I've just got to come up to the neck here. Oops. Try not to paint inside the lines. And then I'm going to go up on this uh, area. Just I'm just going to stop at the, uh, the head there. I am going to add just a touch of white in with this. And I'll tell you the reason why is because sometimes... The brown covers a lot better. As you can see, you can see a lot of my paint lines in this. Um, and if you add a touch of white, it just has a smoother cover. You'd be careful to go around the eyes. That's why sometimes, as I said, I don't always draw them in first. But in this one, I've just, just thought I'd make it easier for everybody to join in. If you are not a drawer, that's okay as well. As I said, that's that's the joy of being able to stop the video and rewatch it and see what goes on. You will find you're going to go over your neckline here. I have outlined this in a little bit of black, so uh, you should know where your neckline is by the angle, though. So it should still show up somewhat. A little bit of white in with my brown again. Come straight up to your line and round. Like so. Doesn't matter if you do go over some of your lines, you can always paint them back in afterwards, it's not a big deal. Okay, so let's go around the eye.
may need a little bit more brown. I haven't put quite enough out, but you never know. As I said before, I don't like to waste paint, so I try and put little out, and then if I need more. Uh, the, only, the only issue with that is if you're mixing a colour, then um, a particular colour, then you know, you've know you got to remix it again. But So I'm leaving this uh, a little looser at the top, just because I'm going to be doing some of fancy hairstyle on Phyllis. Don't forget to make sure you don't leave the canvas white underneath. So at this point, because I can't go much further with my big brush, I'm going to switch to a small one because the ears are a lot smaller, of course. So I'm going to use my smaller angle brush, which is a number four shorthand or wooden brush, if you have those. I'm going to put a bit of water on it, grab a bit of brown. As I've run out of brown, I might make a small amount just to... Okay, so I'm now I'm going to go up and, and just go over Phyllis's ears. I'm just going to fill that in all brown. And grab a little bit more brown. I'm using um, Burnt Umber actually from Windsor & Newton Galleria, which are reasonably priced paints for um, a beginner artist or uh, you know one step up from a beginner maybe so I'm not going to go up there because it's not worth me wasting the paint on that so I'm just going to go around the ears it's only going to be covered anyway so I'm going to have a tiny bit of, oops, that was my elbow, yikes, right. that hurt. <laughs> so I'm just going to come up to there and go around Phyllis's eye here because I've missed a bit. Her eye might be sticking slightly out, so uh, that I'll fix when I'm going down, so... And I'm just going to fix my line here because it's doing a little bit. The cheekbone comes out very slightly, the lower eye, so you could just put a little bend in the cheekbone there. Right, so, wow. This is pretty uh, easy painting. Like as I said, the, the, last, the hardest part is really just mapping out the shape of the face. So as we've got that all in there now, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to um, do some of the um, whoops, some of the main of Phyllis. Again, I'm going to use this small angle brush, which is number four um, brush. I'm going to get a little bit of black with the brown this time. Let me just show you. Yes. So a little bit of black with the brown, so I'm coming out with quite a dark brown. I'm going to make sure it's got enough water on it. And, um, <laughs> and I'm going to give her some nice hair up here. So from the top, I'm going to do a line going over like that, and then another line going over like that, and then another bit coming down like that. And you can overlap some of these. Don't worry if it's coming down over to the brown. That's not an issue because we're going to paint this anyway. I'm going to have this bit come right down here to a point. As you know, they like a little floppy bit over their, uh, over their face a bit. So they're kind of like little um, pointy floppy bits. They, look, they kind of look like leaves at the moment, but it's all right. I'm happy with that. It comes out to the side a bit like that always fix them. So on this line at the top I'm going to follow that down and I'm going to come, I'm going to bring it right out there 
And then if you want to, um, you can make some thinner in certain places, thicker, etc., smaller ones. So like, um, let's say this one, you want a smaller one, just like that. You can just bring it shorter. So as I'm going to do Richard of York gave battle in vain, seven. I actually want about 14. So let me see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Ooh, I had 13 there. The reason why is because I want to put brown in between each. Because I'm going to do a rainbow colour, I'm going to do brown in, in between each one. So I'm going to try and be mindful of how many I'm doing here. So underneath, I'm going to carry another one down like so. That's my three. I might do a thin one now and bring it in small like that. And then I'm going to bring a bigger one in there. So that one's going to be much wider, as you can see. And now I'm going to bring a very small, thin one in like that. Then a wavy one coming out like that. Then I'm going to start small and end up bigger. Oops, and outside my line there. I'm trying to keep my lines relatively straight. How many have I got now? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ooh, we've got plenty, plenty. Nine. Let's try that one off. Ten. And that one's going to go thin and fat. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. Thirteen. So I've got thirteen, roughly thirteen lines. Some are shorter than others, but I just want to make sure I can get my rainbow colours in there. That's my main thing. Main, get it? <laughs> oh, I'm so funny. <laughs> Nuts, that's what I am, I know. Okay, so now we've got the lines all in. Um, I think the next part I'm going to do is where I've actually done all the lines penciled out, I'm going to go over those with some dark brown, black kind of tone because it's going to stand out a lot better. Not necessarily these ones here, but the ones here. So, so wherever your lines are, if you want to work with a small round brush for that, you can. That's the number four round. I'm still using the small angle brush because, you know, I, I can sort of maneuver the lines. But if you can't, just use the, the small round brush. I always say to people, just experiment what works for you. I mean, I'm obviously used to uh, using brushes in different ways. I am going to outline Phyllis's tongue. Just because I can and I want to. Although going around a corner on this one is not so easy. So you do have to be careful on what you do there. So, yeah. And then we'll do this line first there. And then another one there. These are going to be tricky unless you've got a small brush. So I'm going to switch to my small brush for that. So I'm going to put my little angle brush in my water out the way. And I'm going to pick up my small pointy brush, detail brush. If you've, um, I'm probably going to use this angle brush again. So I'm going to put that in my water as well because you don't want it to go dried out. You can wash it off, but, um, you know, just, just sit it in there so it stays wet. So now I'm just going to grab some black. Again, you can make this dark brown or black. It's up to you. Just make sure you've got enough water with your black so that it will run off easily. And this is where I'm just... And you can... If you've made this nostril too small to begin with, you've drawn it too small, this is where you can accentuate it and make it larger. And I'm going to bring her nostril right out to touch the edge a bit more. Like that. 
I mean, they do have quite big nostrils, so if you want, want to go really big, you can. I mean, they're quite hilarious when you see them quite close up like that. Kind of like a music symbol, actually, isn't it? I'm not very musical, so I'm not quite sure what it's called, but I'm sure somebody out there is shouting at the camera saying what it is. This side I'm going to make slightly bigger. Try not to lean in your paint. As I get to smaller work, I have to put my lovely glasses on. I'm going to make this nostril a bit bigger. Coming out outside my line a little bit. Trying to make it neat. If I can. I need a bit more water because that's when it doesn't get very neat when you've not got enough water on them. a bit better. Okay, I might bring that one slightly down. Even it's not on a par because it's her face is slightly at an angle. So, okay, so with the eyes, we can just fill that in straight black because we can put the white on afterwards. So just fill your eye out. I am coming slightly over the edge because the eyes kind of sitting slightly outside the edge there. Don't worry if you've got a rough edge like me and I can see the white underneath because I'm going to put a little bit of white around there. It's always easier to edge something and then paint it in the middle because you've got the lines of guide and then you generally don't go outside of it. Okay. So while we've got some black on our paintbrush, I'm going to do the inside of Phyllis's ears with a, just an inner black colour. Like so. And also on this one. Wow, this is speedy, speedy work, this one. Now then, where are we at now? Oh, I think we're doing so well. Very well. There's going to be some fine tuning, as I always call it. Like, I like to go over the lines that I didn't paint in, so I might just put the black line down there. But you can take your time. No hurry. As I said... If you're struggling keeping up, you can always stop the video and go back. That's the glory of this. All right, Phyllis, we're looking good, girl. We sure are. I will need to probably go over my brown for another coat. So while you're catching up, I'm going to grab my big brush back. I'm going to put it in the water a little bit. So I've still got some brown on my plate. So I'm going to give Phyllis's coat just a second coat. <laughs> Phyllis's coat, another coat. Just going to keep nice and warm. As I said, with the... Canvas paper, it does it does soak in very quickly, so but I do want it even. And you can put some shade on it too, I mean, if you want, you know. It doesn't have to be one shade of brown. You can have different shades of brown in there. I, of course, am just making it easier for everybody by just doing one shade. But if you want to stick, let's say you want to lighten up this side, you can put a little bit of white in with it. Let's say that's the side where the light's shining on it most. So I'd put a little lighter tone on there. But as I said, that's up to you. You don't have to. 
And if yours came out perfectly fine the first time, you don't have to put a second coat on either. I'm just doing it because mine's not covered quite so well. I'm just going to go under there. Roll that around. Like so. And you can, you can do the same thing on the face. Or again, you can put some different tones in there. Like if I grab a little bit of red right now. And a little bit of yellow in with the brown. Come up with a little bit of a dark reddish brown tone. What you can do is you can add a bit of that onto the face too. Just getting a bit fancy now. You can please yourself on this one and add some different tones in. I'm going to leave it like that. I'll just me being fancy. Okay, so our next step. I think we should go to the main next because I want to leave the face until last. That way we're not leaning in the face. So I'm going to do brown, uh, every other one, and then I'm going to do the rainbow colours. And as I said, you don't have to. If you would rather just stick to some pinks and some oranges and some yellows, then grab those colours and go ahead and just do those ones. So I'm just getting my burnt umber out, which is my brown that I'm using. I am going to put a touch of white again with it just so it covers a bit better. And I'm not so much going to do these in the rainbow colours, just these, the main itself down here. So um, I might just... Um, do one of them, maybe in brown at the top. I'm going to try and intermingle those ones. But I mean, make it unique to you. Do what you like. Even if you don't like the colours you've done in the first place, and you're like, no, no, no. I advise you to keep them... Wait for them to dry, and if you really want to change the colour, then I would go over it with white first, and then and then um, whatever colour you want to after that, because uh, colours go over the top of white if they're a, um, you know, a bright shade. You wouldn't be able to paint yellow over the brown, for instance, and it's for a standout. It, it would just sink into it. So I've done my first one brown. Because I've got kind of two things going on here, um, I may just do um, a light brown on one of them and then the rainbow colour on the other one. And I may just choose to do the um, a pale brown underneath here. So I'm putting a bit of white in with my brown and I'm just making it a light colour brown. And then I'll start with my rainbow colour on the short one. But if you've just done, you know, straight ones without doing a short one, then you can carry on. It's probably a lot easier for you if you have done that. And at any point you can override, like you could have done this one all the same colour. You didn't have to change. I'm coming out with a lot of horsey terms. Override. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to go back to straight brown, and I'm going to, so Richard of York gave battle in vain. So now that I'm going to have Richard of York gave battle in vain. So I'm going to need to add another line. So I think I'm going to add that right just here because I want one more section. So I've just added mine there. Anywhere is good, even if it's a small slither of a section, that's fine. So I'm going to do this one as brown. I'm basically just trying to do a brown in between all my rainbow colours, but as I said, if you're following along and you don't want to do that, then go ahead and do your own thing.
I do want to say something while I'm doing this. There is not a link on this video, but I am doing um, just a small charity fundraiser for the NHS charities together. I'm just trying to raise a small amount, really doing my bit. And at any point that you're watching this and you're enjoying it, even if you just make a very small money contribution, anything is good. Uh, I really appreciate it because I'm just trying to reach a small target. Um, I'm not Captain Tom, you know, um, but, you know, I do think anything helps at this point. So I shall put a link or a link is in my Facebook page anyway. Um, so do go on to the Social Canvas UK and check out the link for the, um, it should be pinned to the top of the page for the fundraiser anyway. Richard of York gave battle in vain. I'm getting there. I'd like to know how the kids of today are taught how to remember the rainbow colours. Whether it's the same as what I learned way, way long ago. <laughs> so long ago, Richard of York was probably still alive. <laughs> She's got a pretty mane. She will have anyway, when we're done. Okay. I'm just going to go over any little bits that I still see white underneath before I carry on with my colours. Just play around a little bit. And that's anywhere I've done brown. I'm just going to go over a little bit. Alright, so with her little mane here, I might add a small slither of brown back in. And then I'm going to do the other ones a different colour. Great, wonderful. Anything that you're going over brown, as I said, paint white first. So what I'm going to do is just take my small angle brush again, which is said number four, chiseled, angle, whatever. And where I've got um, going into the brown here, I'm just going to add a little bit of white so that when I want to do a colour, it will show up. So I'm just going to grab that there and go into it. Not the one I've just painted over, but just that one there. And you can see I've got some rough edges on this one. Again, if you want to make some rough edges on it, then go ahead and do so. I'm just going to go inside that line a little bit, like so. Okay, so this is where I'm going to start doing my um, rainbow colours. I'm not going to do the eyes yet. So, Richard of York. So we've got red first. Whichever brush works for you, I'm still going to work with a small angle brush. I'm going to grab my red and I can go straight onto the white because red will show up perfectly well. If you want to do the inside, uh, like around the outside first with your angle, of your angled brush, then that's the way to do it. Beautiful. So we've got the red. Orange! Everybody knows how to make orange, right? You just grab some yellow into your red to make a beautiful orange. If you want to make it more of a um, not so strong orange, you can add a little bit of white. This is probably going to come out quite similar because I haven't put much, um, I've put more, um, not as much yellow in. So I'm just adding a tiny bit of white to that just to make it show up a little bit better. I want to show up more orange than I do. Anything else?
must remember which order I'm doing this in. Let's draw now. This is going to look so pretty when this is done. It's when you can put a bow in her hair if you wish. <laughs> if you're following along, you put flowers in her hair. <laughs> okay, so you will need to wash off that brush if you're going straight to yellow. And with the yellow, as I said, if you're not following along with the rainbow colours, that's fine too. Grab some clean yellow. Don't grab one that you've mixed with orange or made orange already. Try and grab it to the side. I'm going to just put a touch of white in there because the yellow shows up so much better when you've got a touch of white in. So this is quite a bright yellow. Just make sure your brown's dry before you do that because you don't want it running into the brown because you'll end up with some, ooh, some strange colour. Perfect. Richard of York. Green is next. Now, as you know, you can make green if you wish with yellow and blue. But if you have green already on your plate, then just go ahead and use it. And again, depends on how green you like your green. Mine's quite green because I've left the yellow on and added the green. So mine's quite a bright colour. If you don't like it that bright, then just add a, a touch of... Um, Blue in with it or something, just to make it be slightly less subtle, less bright, I should say, not less subtle, more subtle. I need a bit of water on that one there. And again, if you want it softer, you could add a little touch of white to it, and that will also tone down your green. That is quite a bright green. I've just added a touch of white in with it just to see if I can tone it down a little bit. Even though I like the bright green, I just didn't expect it to be quite as bright as that. But if you like yours as bright as that, then leave it. Sorry, I didn't mean to get my head in the way of the camera there. It's because I'm sitting at a certain angle that the light shining on my green and I can't quite see it. So I'm sitting with the window right at the back of me here. Okay, Phyllis. I mean, I do like these colours. I think they're pretty. I just wanted to show a different version of it from my side. But as I said, if you like these colours, then please go ahead and you know, really, it's just a pink, a kind of a light yellowy orange and a sort of a light pink with, with a bit of white in it with it. But I just thought I'd show you a different version as I'm trying to raise money for charity. And let's get the rainbow of hope in there. What's next, you ask? It's blue. Now, with the blue, I'm taking what they call a Windsor blue, which is a dark blue, and I'm adding some white because indigo is dark blue which comes after that, of course. So I'm going to add, going to make sort of a slightly lighter blue. Again, I need a bit of water to make sure it flows on there. It's still quite a nice blue, but it's not as bright, um, not as dark as the other one. Again, it doesn't matter if you go over your lines. So maybe that's not a problem. Bring that out to the end again, actually. And then blue. I'm just stretching that one out a little bit more because I don't want it too thin. See, that covers over there pretty well, so you can do that. But I'm going to make sure my lines are covered. As you can see, the white on the side. So that's why I said if you go over your lines, that's fine because I've, I've left a little bit there. 
So I'm going to have to go back over to make sure it's covered. I've got a phobia about leaving white underneath. Okay, so where are we next? We are at indigo. Indigo, indigo is a dark blue tone. So I'm going to take the blue that I had, which is straight Windsor blue. That may not be as dark as, see, it's not as dark as I like it. So to make it slightly darker, you could add a, just a very, very, very tiny touch of black to that. And that will make it quite dark blue. Let's see. Yeah, so that's gone quite a dark tone now. It might not be quite indigo, but the best I can get. Just try it out and see is what I say. I need a bit more water in with that. Oops. I don't put too much black in there though, because we don't, certainly don't want to go completely black. So for the last one is lilac. Well, actually, it's violet. Sorry, not lilac. Violet. I do happen to have some violet because I bought it straight. But um, this is pale violet. Um, you could actually mix red and blue together. Or if you've got a pink, the pink and blue. So if, let's say if you've got pink like this and you grab a little bit of the blue, it will go kind of a purple color. And then if you add a bit of white, uh, you've just got to get the right amounts of pink and uh, blue and white. And then you can get pretty much to a, a lilac tone. So, you know, that was straight. That's a light lilac, but this is a darker one. So any of those will do for my last and final one. I've only got a little strip there of that, but I might just stretch it out a bit more that way, just so it shows up a bit more. You can make yours wider if you wish. Right, Phyllis, what's next? Oh, the hair, of course, the hair. Do you know what? I think because I've got some lilac, I'm going to give her a lilac one right in the middle. Oops. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Oh, well. I went over my brown by mistake. I don't care. I'm going to give it a rough edge too. So I'm leaving the hair at the ends quite rough. This is where you can mix it up, put your own colours in our hair. I fancy a bit of pink in there. I'm going to grab some pink with a little bit of white. And I'm going to put some pink right next to the purple. It's quite a light pink, this one. And you can come outside the line a little bit if you wish. But if you've got white in with your pink, that will look better because it will cover the line a little bit. And if you want to make, as I said, just with this brush, you can make like hair like um, strokes like that so that it's loose. It's more coming out to the side actually like this. And I'm not sure but I think I might make that bottom one yellow a bit like I've made this one. This is a two-tone yellow actually, a yellowy orange. So I'm going to grab the yellow that I had And I think I might do the same thing, make it sort of a light orangey yellow because it'll show up nice against her face. So make sure you add white in with it just to cover anything that you don't want to see, like the line. As I said, this is all up to you what colours you use. I may go back and just 
play around a little bit more with, because um, these are quite bright. To soften them up, I'll show you what you can do once I've done this. And uh, I think I've got too much brown at the top, so I might just add another one of these light orangey brown, uh, orangey yellow tones, which is just yellow with a bit of white. Um, and I'm going to break that one up there because it was a little thicker than I wanted. And I haven't got enough white in that because it's not covering as well. It's a little bit more white and you see it covers much better. So. It's not quite as orange as the one underneath. So where the, this dries quite quickly, this, so you can go over it again if you're seeing the underneath too much. Sometimes it does need a couple of coats, lighter colours on top of darker coats. Obviously it depends on the quality and the thickness of your paints anyway. And with this, just like that one, I want to put a little touch of orange with very start of that colour. Starts out a little bit darker at the roots. I'm sure we're all dealing with roots at the moment. Okay, so she's got a different colour on the head. I just wanted to show you the different different things that you could do there with dear Phyllis. And um, again, with the brown that I've got in between, I, I wanted to show you how you could do that for the rainbow, but if you want to make it different colours, you know, it's up to you. Okay, so this is what we're going to do next. I'm going to wash that brush off, dry it off on my paper. And even though this is white and this looks white, there's a different tone in with it. So I'm going to grab a little bit of the pink and some white. So I've messed up my palette completely so I've got sort of a little touch and my white's not very clean so make sure you white. So it will look quite bright if I just put this on here now but that's okay because I'm going to be able to go over it a little bit. I'm going to put a little bit of pink again any brush will do on this. I'm just putting a bit of pink down there and then I'm going to put a bit of pink Like so, right in the middle of the nose, just a little bit. Right, just in the middle there. So it could be rough, doesn't have to be a perfect shape or anything, just put some blobs. You can even kind of push it into the, because uh, we want, she's got a little bit of pink on the end of her nose, and this is where the fun starts, because we're going to start with pink right at the base of her. If you do not have pink, you can mix a bit of red and white. So we're going to make it darker at the base of the tongue, like so. Just at the base, I want to make it dark. I'm going to grab a little bit more white and I'm going to bring that pink all the way down to the bottom of her tongue and all the way to the side like so. So that's slightly lighter because I've added a little bit of white to my pink. And then I'm going to make a pink line also right down the middle, like that. And then on the very end, you can see there's a sort of a, a darker pink that's like that, right on the end. I'm not using the right brush for this, but that's because I'm lazy. I could easily switch to the small round. So it's just like a moustache shape, if you like, right on the very end. So I'm going to leave that like that for now. Actually, I might add just a bit slightly dark pink at the base again. So I'm going to cover that in. It doesn't matter if it's rough like that. Don't worry about that. 
And then right under a mouth bit here, I'm going to put another pink bit, but not in the hole of that, just inside. So you're going to leave a gap between that and that. Like so. So now I'm just going to wash my brush up a little bit. And I'm going to grab very, very pale blue. Again, this is just a very subtle blue going on there. So I want you to just grab some white and just a touch of the blue that you were using. Not much. Again, it, it's not going to look much. And this is where you just have to experiment. So I'm going to put a little bit there. And then I'm going to come out to the sides of the blue and just go underneath like so. And to the bottom there. Just come up to the nose area a little bit. So now, that's fine. I'm now going to take my bigger brush and just fill in, or I should say I'm going to wash this brush off. doesn't matter which brush, actually, as long as you can fill. So give this a good wash off because I don't want any blue left on it. And I'm going to grab some white now, which I seem to have run out. So I'll just grab a little bit more. And I'm going to paint a little bit over this. And you'll see why, because it, it will still show through, but it will be more subtle. So then even though I'm grabbing the white here, you'll still see that pink through, but it'll be just dumbed down a little bit. Let's put it like that. So you can come right into your pink like that so that it's soft. It's not standing out too much. Same with your blue. You can just lightly go over it with your white here. Because I just want a subtle pink underneath. I don't want it too bright. And you can bring, I know it's white on white, but it, 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 don't worry about that. It's, it'll still cover, it's still covering the, uh, the canvas, which is the key. And then we're going to go with the white all the way up here. Any of those areas that you haven't yet gone over is where you're going to go over So right out to the edge here, all the way out, past the nose there, like so, oops, make sure you don't put your brush in any other paint brush like me, paint colour, oops, so here you've got to sort of have a steady hand or lean on something, I usually lean my hand on the canvas but in this case I'm just going to try and go around Best I can, all the way up there, like so. So you can see it's still there, but it's made it a lot more subtle. And I'm going to do the same thing in the um, over here. So I'm just going right in that central bit there, coming up here. Just to make it quite subtle. I mean, I have added, I think, a little bit of yellow in with that. So this bit here, again, is um, very, very, well, it's white. But if you want to put a very pale bit of pink in it, because it will show up a lot better if you do. You may not see it very well, but I can see I've got a light pale pink going on there. And in here, because the, the mouth is a little darker, I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with that as well. Basically, there was a little bit of white up the top here. Again, I'm still going to leave it as this pale pink right just here at the very top. There's a little bit of white pink, whatever. But then on the other bit, I've put a little bit of orange. So again, make a little bit of tiny bit of orange with your red and your yellow. Or if you've already got it on your plate, great stuff. And I'm going to just put that there and there although that's too light i need to make a darker orange so let me grab more red more orange and i'm gonna just put a bit there and there like so 
hopefully you can see that. That's a lot brighter than that one. That's probably more of a brown than it is um, um, orange, but it's okay. If you want to make it browner, you can, or more red, you can. While I've got a bit of orange on, I'm actually going to just bring a little bit of orange back into my tongue. I like two tones, three tones, four tones. <laughs> so I'm just going to bring a little bit of that in there. Just a little bit like so. So that's a funky tongue. 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 I might bring a little bit more in there. And you can use your finger if you want to rub it in a little bit more. Okay, Phyllis, how are we doing? We've just got the eyes to do. While you've still got your paint, you could go over any of those areas. You can still see the colour underneath if you want. Or I should say the canvas underneath. I'm just going to add that little bit there. And, um, yeah, like I've gone over that black. So this is where you can touch up stuff and, um, and go over it. Okay, so I'm going to go to the eyes next with my small round brush, which is a number four round, that one, just a short handle one. And I'm going to grab some white. I must not forget her eyelashes. And I'm going to grab some white and I'm going to give her an eye. Right, middle of eyeball. Middle of eyeball? Just like so. And then try and keep them level and in the middle. Don't want it to be cross-eyed, do you? Like so. Perfect. And then I'm going to use the same brush to just go around the outside of the right. And I'm bringing that right over into that section there. And if you want to, you can go all the way around like so to highlight her eyes a bit more. Let's go around the bottom. Oops. Take your time if you're finding it difficult. Small areas can be difficult, I know. Like so. And while you've got your white, this is where you can touch up areas that you can still see through. Like that white area, you can still see through it. So I've just gone over that one and I can still see through my pink there. So I'm just going to grab the pink and white again and just go over that. The more white should cover it, no problem. Perfect. Okay, Phyllis, you need some eyelashes. So I'm going to give her some eyelashes now. Same brush, same round brush. I'm going to give it a little wish wash and I'm going to get some black on my brush. To get a nice angle on your brush, if you roll it on your palette, get a little bit of moisture on it, like water, I should say, and then just roll a little bit, not right in the main part of your black, but just on the side, and you'll get sort of a, a better angle going. So I'm going to do three flicks. I'm going to start there she's got some nice long ones there and there you can give her as many as you like but she's got some nice long eyelashes on this one it's not so easy on this side unless you're left-handed of course but you can bring them out at the same angle like so you can even give her some lower ones if you wish like so why not she should be pretty Right, Phyllis, some beautiful eyelashes, I think. Yes, three's enough. I'm not going to go over the top there. All right, we're getting there. I'm going to go over my nostril, which I inadvertently went over with my right. That's why I said you just have to play a little bit. Oh, she's so glamorous, aren't you, girl? Right, so I'm just going to go over some little bits and pieces here to just to tidy it up. So... Where my ear is, I'm just going to go around the line. And on my cheek, I'm going to go around the line. Stop there. I didn't actually make that, but I'm going to go up there as well. This just really, you know, fine tunes the painting a little bit. If you're happy with yours the way it is, though, just leave it. And again, I like to put my lines back in here as well. I 
Okay. Same with this here. I'm just going to go back over that one. Make it stand out. Much better, Phyllis. I might actually also just fill in some of those lines there. Make this a bit rougher on the end. So I've gone over that too. Just bringing it into life a bit more. Like Phyllis Girl. And then I'm going to also outline her there as well. That's much better. Now she feels whole. Um, as with the colours, as I said, if you, you know, you want to make them a little bit more subtle, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to put the lines in again. So I go over my lines and I'm just going to highlight them back in and then I'll show you what I'm going to do just to make them more subtle. The colours and the tones a bit more subtle. A bit more water with your black so that it flows. That's the only trouble with a small brush. It doesn't hold as much paint, so you have to keep applying it. Keep applying the water and the paint. Music seems to have gone off. It wasn't very special music anyway. It's something I'm doing quickly, this these lines. Try not to put my hand in the pen at the same time. And any areas that you've missed, like there, I've got a little bit of white showing through, so I'm just going to get some brown on that. So to make the colours, you still want them to be vibrant, but if you want to make them a bit more subtle, what you can do is just get a little bit of white. I'm going to use the same, actually I'm not, I'm going to use the angled brush again, the small one. You can use any brush, actually, it doesn't really matter. It's just that this holds a little bit more paint. I don't want it to be too bright, so I'm going to get the white, but then I'm going to wipe it back off. And I'm just going to come along the top part of my... So it still shows up red, but what it's doing is it's just making it a lot more subtle. Softer. I don't know if you can see that very well. So I'm not going over the, the complete thing. I'm just really going over the central part a little bit. It's like giving it, um, not a frosty look, but a um, pastel, maybe you can call it that. And it's called a dry brush, that's why I don't put, I've rubbed it back off, off on my um, paper again. So I'll get some white, but then I kind of rub it back off again. It's like, yeah, so there's not really much back on, much on there, but I'm just giving it a little bit on top of the blue with the with the navy blue, you won't want a lot because it will show up a bit too much. So just really skim a little bit over there. And then a bit on the other lilac. So it's just softened it out very, very slightly there. And then the final bit is your background. Now, this is entirely up to you. Um, I did this very, very light blue tone because um, I didn't want to make a big deal of, of the colour. So... If you've got some colour already on your plate, you can make it one of those tones if you wish. Um, use your big brush if you've got a lot of space to cover. So I'm going to clean my big angled brush off. Um, I, you know, I like the white background, so I don't want to make it too strong of a colour. So I'm going to grab some white first of all. In fact, I might just go with whatever's on my plate here. Let's see. I'm going to grab a little bit of the lilac in mine and just make it a um, 
soft light. Oh, I like the rainbow. Do you? Yeah, Thank that's you. That's cute. It's my daughter back in here. Um, just cook, just see if she's all right. Come back. Right. So I've got just a little bit of lilac. I've had to pin this up because this paper does fall down. I'm sure you're not having that problem. You perhaps can't see this lilac that well from the camera, but I'm, I. I really, it's always good to pick a colour that's already in your painting. But because I'm going for more of a pastel kind of a look, I didn't want a strong background. So that's why I thought the um, the lilac tone would look better. I need more white again. I've always run out of white already. And you don't have to make it one tone. What I like to do is like make it a bit patchy, for instance, just um, put some patches of that colour around. So if you want to go for blue, you can just make it patchy rather than one tone. But definitely keep it light because of the darkness of the horse's coat, Phyllis's coat. So just grab some more white now. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you how I'm just adding... Just around my painting, a very soft tone of lilac in my case. As I said, whatever you choose. It's just because I've got a little bit of lilac in my painting here and there. You could choose pink if you wish, or you could use blue, yellow. Whoops, I've gone a little bit too dark there. Rub that off again. You could leave it white if you wish. And when, if you're coming right up to your horse, just be wary you're not going right into your um, the line there. And you can soften any colour that you've got with a little bit of white over the top. Just going in and out of that. Okay. I'm not going to go right up to it. I'm going to leave it about there. So I just want a rough background colour. I don't want anything too strong. I'm going to come right up to the head bit on the top there. Pretty. Pretty as a picture, Phyllis. You surely are. So, I'm, I don't know, you know. Um, she's she's looking good. I kind of like Phyllis. She's she's a she's a fine looking filly, and I'm going to put my name in the bottom corner there because she deserves recognition. <laughs> this is where I just don't know what I'm saying, right? Always do a colour that's going to stand out, of course. So you're going to put your initials. Whoops. Use a small paintbrush or a marker. Put your name right down there. So, I don't know how everybody's doing, but please leave some comments when you've completed your painting. And please, if you would like to show me your um, painting, I would love to see it. Um, so you can always uh, send me it via message on the social canvas UK on Facebook, on our Facebook page, 
uh, or um, you can send me it by email at info at the social canvas.co.uk. Um, I would just love to see it. Please um, send me a picture. I hope you enjoyed Phyllis. Uh, I hope you made a lovely and colourful. And as I said, if you could make a donation to uh, my charity uh, fundraiser, which is on the Social Canvas UK, I would really appreciate it. Uh, I look forward to seeing you soon. My technical director is missing, so I'm going to have to figure out how to start, <laughs> start the camera. <laughs> I shall try my best, but I will say au revoir, goodbye. I'll see you later. Ta-ta.